Hey everyone, it's Dr. Romani. Welcome back to this YouTube channel on narcissism. Just letting you know, reminder on my healing program and in September, 25% off your first month if you sign off. So, so that's a already, you're already a winner listening to this video. The, the details are on the, in the video notes. Well, let's take on this question. Drop the answers in the, in the, uh, in the comments too. What does a normal relationship look like? This is a little bit of a trick question. I'll tell you why in a minute, but what does a normal relationship look like? So my answer to this is, this is a tough question to answer because there is clearly a wide range of normal, but there are some essential ingredients. Okay. Now in a minute, I'll get to what a healthy relationship is, but let's start with normal because there is a difference. Okay. In a normal relationship, there may be some disagreements or maybe even pretty noisy arguments from time to time, but ultimately there will be the capacity to hold space for the other person's point of view, come to a compromise and to do so without doing a character assassination of the other person. In a normal relationship, people may sometimes get tempted by other people from time to time, even if it's just for a minute or even just have a daydreamy moment about another person, maybe seated next to someone on a train or a bus or an airplane or someone you run into regularly at a coffee shop or someone you work with. But ultimately, there is the capacity to set boundaries and not get pulled into an inappropriate relationship, either electronically or in person, out of respect for your existing relationship the person you are in it with and for yourself. In a normal relationship, people get angry and in fact may get really, really pissed off. But that anger doesn't escalate into frightening rage and dysregulation and terrifying anger. People in normal relationships who experience a lot of anger at a given moment may walk it off or exercise it off or find a way to get past it, even if that just means a few hours by themselves. In a normal relationship, people may get annoyed at the other person. It may be about towels on the floor, toilet seats that aren't put down, how the dishwasher gets emptied, snoring, belching, talking too loudly, and can give feedback about that. And there's some good faith attempt by that toilet seat transgressor at addressing the annoyances and no rage in the face of the annoyances or hearing about the annoyances. In a normal relationship, people may sometimes tell a white lie. I liked what you cooked. You look good in that hat. Your friend's wife seems like a really nice person, just to keep the damn trains running, but not the technicolored lies that are a problem. I went to the gym after work when they didn't. I deposited the check when they didn't. And there could be some problems because those lies may go quite deep. In a normal relationship, sometimes people aren't interested in the same things. They may not like watching the subtitled period piece TV shows you like. They may not like watching Monday night football. You may not like fly fishing. They may not like eating foods you like. So you find compromises. Maybe you watch that show they aren't watching with you. You support them going on trips with friends to do the things that they enjoy, but you don't criticize their interests in a normal relationship and they don't attack yours or shame them. In a normal relationship, there may be times you or they aren't in the mood for sex and your partner respects that, but you still have a healthy dialogue about it. You don't just sweep it under the rug. Maybe you snuggle, but you don't say, Yo, you aren't having sex with me, so I decided to go find it somewhere else. In a normal relationship, you sometimes daydream about what it would be like to be single or live a different life than the one in the relationship. Trust me, the other person's doing that too sometimes. Not all the time, but something may set you off on that thought loop. Mental exploration isn't betrayal. Acting on it or calling the other person in the relationship out for stopping them from living the life they want, that's not so okay. I'm sharing all of this about normal relationships 
because I have talked about healthy relationships before, characterized by respect, kindness, self-awareness, compassion, empathy, shared values, growth, companionship. Healthy relationships are comprised of healthy ingredients, a sort of gold standard, and some people out there are lucky enough to be in them. A narcissistic relationship can never be healthy. It's missing the fundamental list of everything that makes a narcissistic relationship. A normal relationship has that healthy stuff, but because life happens, sometimes it gets buried, like you'd see like in a messy garage or closet. The stuff's in there. It's not, it's not always easy to find when things are really disorganized or not completely smooth. But are all normal relationships healthy? Let me, as I do, use a food analogy. A really healthy meal may be a lean protein, veggies, complex carbohydrates, minimal, add minimal added sugar, balanced levels of sodium, few saturated fats, like a whole salmon, quinoa, steamed vegetables, small bit of fruit for dessert situation. A normal meal may have some potatoes with a little butter on the side, maybe a piece of pie for dessert, a little bit of extra salt. Healthy enough, but not perfect, because that's life. If we bring the narcissistic relationship into that meal metaphor, we're kind of talking about a supersized fast food meal with a milkshake and a sugary soda and dessert and a bag of chips and a bunch of processed sugar and a big piece of cake and pie. Keep eating like that and it will kill you. When people set out the standard of healthy relationships, just like with that healthy meal, I know that many people roll their eyes and think, please. And then they may give up on the plot. They're like, I ain't got that. But the normal relationship, that's a different beast. Normal relationships mean that you have the messiness of life. Toilet seats that are sometimes in the wrong position. Watching some of your TV shows alone. Sometimes wondering for a second if you should have stayed single. Maybe having a little bit of a fantasy about the cute person at the gym but none of it cuts away at the fundamental decency of your relationship. Maybe sometimes your partner will snuggle and fall asleep with you as you watch the period piece subtitled drama. Or after that friend's weekend, when you come back, you find something soothingly familiar about their snoring. The normal relationship is our saggy bits, our broadening waistlines, the wrinkles on our face. It's the normal stuff. Unfortunately, social media either shows grandiose, love-bombed, perfect kind of distorted fan fantasy relationships or people proclaiming their over-the-top joy, I love them so much, relationship goals nonsense. Uh, we don't tend to see so many social media posts and pictures of towels on the floor or the argument you had about how to set the thermostat. The normal relationship is different from the narcissistic relationship in some key ways. There is room and space for both people's reality and experience. You may not like watching football on Sundays, and you can say that. And they may not want to spend Sundays helping you out with certain errands because they are watching that football game. And you can accept that and just move on. There is a regulation of emotion in a normal relationship. Even when there's anger, it's not slamming doors and yelling and horrible rage and menace. But maybe, a, I think I need to take a little walk or give me a minute, and you let each other come down. In a normal relationship, there's at least a real attempt at avoiding shaming the other, avoiding gaslighting. And but rather, you try things like, I don't agree with you, but you're you and I'm me and it's all okay. Instead of saying something like, only a loser would like that restaurant or Ugh, why don't you look like the cute guy at the gym? You feel your reality in a normal relationship is seen. Maybe it's not always appreciated. I think that for survivors of narcissistic relationships, 
This is an important distinction because people coming out of a narcissistic relationship are always trying to figure out what's normal or even what does normal look like once you get out of the narcissistic relationship. A lot of us are told what a healthy relationship looks like. I'm guilty of that on the channel. That's why I made this video. Because of that, we don't always get to hear what a normal relationship looks like. The stuff that never gets posted on social media. Listen, I am sure it would be a hoot to be in a relationship where you're with your best friend, having great sex regularly, and you love the same things, and you want the same things, and you praise each other all the time, and you both honor each other's rhythms, and nobody snores, and the toilet seat is always where you want it. Yay for you if you have that. The respect and compassion and kindness and empathy, they may not always be on central display in a garden variety normal relationship but you know they're there. They may come out at little moments when someone affectionately rolls their eyes as they come in and see one more show about people who live in a castle, but they still give you a kiss and tell you, enjoy it. Or they chuckle when you leave a note on top of the dirty towels on the floor and they don't rage at you. After a narcissistic relationship, a normal relationship, can feel like coming home to a dream. Just keep it real and don't get panicky about the disagreements or the stuff of life. We can get overly sensitized to, overly sensitized to disagreements after we go through a toxic relationship. It's not the disagreements and the foibles that are the problem. It's about how they are handled. So here, here, all hail the normal relationship. Thanks again.